Good morning, everybody. Just allowing um, the room to fill up. Great, I think I can start now. Good morning and a pleasant afternoon to all of you joining us. My name is Natasha Edwin Walcott. I am the Senior Advisor for Competitiveness and Export Promotion here at Caribbean Export. Our office is located in Barbados and I have the honor of moderating this webinar today. Our webinar entitled Facilitating Trade and Investment Between the Caribbean and Africa. I am especially elated that we at Caribbean Export are able to partner with our friends from the African Export Import Bank. I know our executive director, Diodat Maharaj, will offer his welcome. But on behalf of the agency, a special welcome to Kanayo Awani. She is the executive vice president, Intra African Trade Bank for the Afrexim Bank. We also have Mr. Okichiku. Ihirika, the Acting Chief Operations Officer for the Caribbean Office, also of the Avrexim Bank. They will both share with us about the bank. I was able to witness um, last year the bank's formal opening in Barbados, and so they will tell us more about their role, objectives, and the rationale for this co collaboration with the Caribbean. We are also thrilled to have Dave Sahadath, who is the founder and director of global business development of Global Integrated Fintech Solutions. And he will share a business perspective. Dave is Bar Barbadian. And so um, doing business in mm -hmm. Africa, we are quite interested to hear his business perspective and his experience. As of this morning, just as we went live, we had close to, in fact, more than 450 registrants from across the Caribbean and Africa, as far north as Bahamas, Belize, Guyana, the Eastern Caribbean, St. Lucia, where I'm from. I also see that we have colleagues from the bank in Cairo, but also Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, South Africa, Malawi, Mauritius, Sierra Leone, just to name some of the participants from across the continent. So the, the, that's just to show you the reach that we've been able to, to garner for this important webinar. Just to set the context before I pass the floor on to Diodat to share some welcome remarks, just to say that Caribbean Africa relations have been building momentum. In 2021, the inaugural Caribbean community, that is CARICOM, that summit was held virtually under the theme, unity across continents and oceans, opportunities for deepening integration. This summit reinvigorated relations between the two regions. Since then, there have been some seminal advancements, both political and economic. Some CARICOM countries, for instance, have established di diplomatic relations in some African states. And similarly, African countries have established a presence in the region. In addition, the region has hosted several heads of state of African countries over the last few years. And the, in the case of Caribbean, the Caribbean's presidents and prime ministers, they too have been welcomed on the continent in recent times. The Afro-Exim Bank has been at the center of some of those exchanges, including the bank's AGM and 30th anniversary celebrations last year in Accra. Economically, Africa is growing, it has garnered significant investment in non-traditional sectors, with many cities having established themselves as innovation hubs with significant inward investment in smart technologies. Moreover, the Africa continental free trade area boasts as the largest free trade area in the world, with 54 signatories and a projected income boost of USD $450 billion dollars by 2035, lifting 30 million people out of poverty. So to share some more about the rationale for this partnership, I invite our executive director, Diodat Maharaj, to bring some welcome remarks. Diodat, uh, just before I hand over the floor, just a few housekeeping. 
Um, we will proceed with, with the agenda as is, hear from um, the bank, then we will hear from Dave. We also um, will then open up the floor um, later on. And I would ask that if there's any question for a particular panelist that um, that could be identified in the, in the question and answer. So Diodat, you have the floor. Thank, thank you so much, Natasha. And good morning to all my friends and, and colleagues and our business partners across the Caribbean. Good afternoon to our friends and colleagues and business partners and those who are interested in doing business uh, from Africa who are online, we are delighted to welcome you this morning. Uh, Executive Vice President Kanayu Awani uh, from the Afro-Exim Bank, my dear brother Ukichuku Ijerika, Acting Chief Operations Officer of the Caribbean Office of the Afro-Exim Bank, my dear friend and brother Dave Saharat from Barbados, Founder and Director of Global Business Development, Global Integrated Fintech Solutions, uh, delighted to be uh, to sharing the, the, the stage with you this morning. I mean, I'm really happy that we have so many participants, more than 450 participants from across the Caribbean and Africa joining us this morning or this afternoon if you're in Africa. And I'm thrilled to welcome you to our webinar entitled Facilitating Trade and Investment Between the Caribbean and Africa. I mean, as Natasha mentioned, uh, we have been collaborating with Afro-Exim Bank for two years now, and EVP Kanayo, I mean, permit me to say, to express our deep gratitude and satisfaction with what uh, Afro-Exim Bank has been able to achieve in a very short period of time, from establishing a presence to actually doing business here in the Caribbean. I think it's quite welcome and congratulations to the team in Barbados and, of course, the team in Cairo. Uh, we at Caribbean Export, we were also very happy to serve as the ambassador for the Caribbean for, the, for last year's African Fair that took place in Cairo. And again, EVP Kanayu, I know you played an important leadership role in that event, and it was truly an outstanding success. So congratulations again uh, to you and the entire team. I mean, as Natasha mentioned, I mean, we in the Caribbean and Africa, our ties are strong uh, uh, and inextricable. Uh, we share a sense of history, culture, a common identity, one people. We in the Caribbean are so conversant with the Pan-African movement for independence that also inspire us in the Caribbean for independence. And names as Kwame and Kuma and Kenyatta and people of that ilk inspire us here in the Caribbean. But what we haven't really seen, we haven't seen those ties and those relationships translate into concrete and tangible business opportunities for Caribbean people and for African people. And that's why we are particularly interested in building and cementing and forging a strong partnership with Afro-Exim Bank to create those opportunities for businesses in Africa and businesses here in the Caribbean. And the Caribbean Export Development Agency, I think we're uniquely poised to help facilitate that, give more remit of promoting Caribbean trade globally and getting investments here to the, to the Caribbean. When it comes to our friends in Africa who are tuned in, oftentimes when you think of the Caribbean, we think of very small islands of limit, with limited population. And I served in Africa. My first posting with the UN was in Tanzania. My last posting was in Mozambique. And I don't know Africa as well as Africans, but I have a fair idea. But I know the perception that we are seen as small. But the fact is that the Caribbean, the Caribbean community, plus the Dominican Republic, you're looking at a market of around 50 million people. When we take into account or consideration tourist arrivals of another 30 million, we are looking at a market, a high value market of close to 60 million people. So there are immense opportunities here in the Caribbean for African businesses. And there's a thirst for African goods as well as services. But when we look at the numbers, the numbers don't, they tell, us, they tell the story of the potential, but the numbers are actually quite dismal when you look at the quantum of trade. According to the International Trade Center trade map in 2021, Africa exports to our region represented a mere 0.001% of 
of Africa's total exports. So less than 1%. While its imports from the Caribbean constituted 0.002% of its total imports. In comparison, our exports to Africa represented 1.4% of our total exports. While the region, region's imports from Africa constituted just 0.4% of our total imports. So you can see the immense opportunities and space to deepen trade and investment between Africa and the Caribbean. And I think that we are certainly cognizant of the efforts that have been made thus far at the political level. But we understand quite clearly, and the business people who have joined this webinar, they understand certainly better than me, Deodat Maharaj, that to really to drive trade and investment between Africa and the Caribbean, the policy, the policy makers create the environment but business people have to actually drive it forward. And that's why last year we undertook an inaugural mission to Ghana and Nigeria aimed at creating those business-to-business -business relationships. And I'm happy that Dave is here with us, Dave Sahara, because he joined us on that mission as well, and he can speak about his experience and the business that he was able to undertake. I mean, just one piece of data I wanted to also provide is that we in the Caribbean, uh, we are the most food insecure region on the planet. And we have an ambition to reduce our regional food bill by 25% by the year 2025. We import billions of United States of dollars in food every single year. Africa's product, Africa is home to 60% of the world's non-cultivated arable lands. And as you increase your agriculture and leverage technology, there's much we can learn, but there's much that we can import from Africa as well. So there are immense opportunities for trade in that agricultural sector. In the area of renewable energy, another big priority for the Caribbean, places like Ghana with its power sector master plan, which speaks an ambition of 30% renewables and 14% variable renewable energy generation by 2035, also has valuable object lessons for us here in the Caribbean. Um, we were delighted going back to the mission that we undertook to Ghana and Nigeria last year, that the business people that we took were able, and they will speak to that, to generate a lot of traction, and there's a lot of interest in the Caribbean. And over the two weeks in Accra and in Lagos, we recorded 115 business meetings, signed partnership agreements with six private sector umbrella organizations in Ghana and Nigeria, respectively. And I believe some of these partners are joining us today in the webinar. I mean, Caribbean export, we recognize the importance of bringing businesses together. And we have our flagship event, and we were delighted that our Exim Bank joined us last year in Bahamas at the Caribbean Investment Forum. The next Caribbean Investment Forum will be taking place over the period 10 to 12 July in Georgetown, Guyana. And we would be delighted to welcome a big contingent of businesses from Africa coming to Guyana for the Caribbean Investment Forum 2024. Just as an aside, Guyana 2022 was the fastest growing economy on the planet at 54%. In 20, the next year, they eclipsed that. And this year, again, the World Bank and IMF have given Guyana a forecast that will make it the, that will make it the highest growing economy in the world, where growth is expected to be around 34% in the year 2024. So we would welcome businesses from Africa coming to the Caribbean Investment Forum 2024 in I don't wish to take more of you to that Caribbean export is really thrilled to witness the strides made by the bank in the region as noted earlier. I mean, we were involved since the inaugural active witnessed the launch of the bank's office here in Barbados and our mission in Ghana. And interesting EVP Kanayu, I mean, to hear the compelling vision of President Orama and the strength of this Caribbean-African relationship and the commitment to advancing this. And we are deeply grateful to our friend and brother, Oki, who's been running operations for Afri Exim Bank here in Barbados. Um, and we want to take this partnership to the next level. We have Caribbean export. We have a very strong network and we have an existence in the middle, mid nineties. We know the region well as exemplified by the number of people participating to the actual business people. Um, we also implement the, implemented the EU's 11th uh, 
European Development Fund program, the Regional Private Sector Development Program for the Caribbean. We are happy that we were able to, to achieve a record 93% implementation rate, and we are actually implementing a successor program now and driving that regional private sector efforts on behalf of our development partners. Um, we have been speaking with the local team on several fronts, including on the Mansa platform, and there is a lot of interest in this platform, and we will hear a bit more about it today. So I think, in closing, I would like to thank uh, EVP Kanayo of Preferent and Brother Oki. Importantly, the part business participants who have joined us for this webinar this morning in the Caribbean, this afternoon in Africa, because what we want to do, we want to provide services so that you can take advantage the opportunities provided by AfriExim Bank that can create the foundation to deepen that trade and investment relationship between Caribbean and Africa and translate our inextricable historical and people and cultural ties into business opportunities that can create jobs and opportunity for people in Africa and people in the Caribbean. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Diodat, um, for this warm welcome and Sydney you have painted a compelling vision um, for, for this partnership. At this time, I would welcome EVP Kanayo Awani, the e Executive Vice President, Intra-African Trade Bank of the Agrarexin Bank to, to bring some welcome remarks as well. well. Thank you, thank you, Natasha, thank you. Um, let me acknowledge, uh, before I start guest started, Mr. Jodat, Maharaj, Executive Director of Caribbean Export, my colleague, Hoke okay, Hejirika, who is the Acting Chief Operating Officer for the Caribbean Office, based in Barbados for Afrex and Bank, um, Mr. Dave Sahadath, Founder and Director of the Global Integrated FinTech Solutions, um, Natasha Edwin Walcott, Moderator, Mr. Damisin and Manager, at the Caribbean Sports and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I bring warm greetings from Cairo, from the African Export Import Bank, especially from our president, Professor Rama, executives and staff and manage staff management of the bank. It's a good day to you all, and thank you for joining us for this very important webinar on facilitating trade and investment between Africa and the Caribbean. I extend my, my sincere gratitude to Mr. Maharaj and the Caribbean Export Development Agency for spearheading this initiative, which underscores the importance of collaboration and dialogue between our regions. Thank you, Mr. Maharaj, for your, your kind words as well. Um, between us, I'm sure there's a lot we can do together to promote trade and investment between Africa and the Caribbean. As we gather today, um, it's always imperative to reflect on the profound historical ties that bind Africa and the Caribbean. A shared past marked by, by both adversity and resilience has laid the foundation for a renewed era of cooperation and prosperity. From the ancient pre-colonial trade routes that connected our shores to the dark chapters of slavery, I intertwined destinies have shaped the cultural and economic landscapes of both regions. Yet amidst the challenges of the past, we stand on the threshold of a new dawn. Mr. Maharaj mentioned it clearly, the dawn of economic prosperity, economic liberation. Today we have the opportunity to harness the pot immense potential of Africa-Caribbean trade and investment to foster mutual growth and development. The statistics you already mentioned, Mr. Mah <laughs> Maharaj, you know, speak for themselves. We have a projected market of over $2 billion in sh the short term, and the possibilities for collaboration, in our view, is boundless. At the bank, we are committed to driving the agenda forward. Through our Caribbean initiative, which falls under the auspices of our diaspora strategy, we are laying the groundwork for enhanced economic ties between our regions. By partnering with 11 Caribbean countries or member states so far and establishing the first regional office in Barbados, we are reaffirming our commitment 
to the prosperity and development of both Africa and the Caribbean. We are steadfast, we remain so towards the realization of a global Africa. Under the bank's intra-African trade strategy, we define Africa with an N and call it African with an emphasis on N. This has helped us to look beyond the geographic Africa to all Africans, wherever they might be. Including the diaspora helps us capture the steady increase of trade and commercial ties between Africa and its citizens in the diaspora. Positively, our efforts have begun to bear fruit. We have recently successfully executed our first facility disbursement to the government of St. Lucia under, under our climate adaptation program. This is just the beginning. In the coming months, we anticipate further disbursements. In fact, we have a pipeline that exceeds about $2 billion. And, and as I was saying, in the coming months, we expect further disbursements. We expect further disbursements in the sports infrastructure in Barbados. We expect disbursements in development of hotels in Grenada, um, resorts in Antigua, as well as the work we're doing in an Egyptian um, fishery and aquaculture company to extend projects across the Caribbean island. In addition, we've had two very successful Africa, Africa Caribbean trade and investment forums active in 2022, as we call it, held in Bridgetown, Barbados. The 2023 version held in Georgetown, Guyana, marking a watershed in the journey towards Afri African Caribbean economic cooperation. However, success depends not only on our actions, but on the collective efforts of all stakeholders. Events like today's webinar play a crucial role in raising awareness and fostering meaningful engagement between Africa, African and Caribbean businesses and entities, as well as highlighting the unique role Africa Bank can play to support these efforts. I urge each, of each and every one of you to seize this moment to learn more about the bank, the products, the programs and initiatives we have on offer for the region, and to please explore potential avenues for collaboration. We offer a suite of, of programs and products, various types of financing and non-financing support to enhance trade and investment relations between both regions. On the financing side, we offer trade loans, as for credit facilities, guarantees, facilities to support the Caribbean region, in particular, we include what we will do in the um, hotel and tourism sector, medical, um, hot, medical tourism sector, project finance, project preparation facility, the merchant marine facility, facilities we offer to support aquaculture and fishery, uh, fishing, the facility we offer for the creative economy, like film financing, music production facilities, guarantees, uh, we offer what we call franchising programs, and the menu of products are, uh, uh, are huge, even if I say so myself. Other than that, we also offer advisory services, trade information services, advocacy services, among others. When it comes to trade and investment facilitation, there are a number of initiatives that we also support if I may just draw on a highlight, our Creative Africa Nexus program, Canex, which provides also financing and non-financing instruments and interventions to support the, the growth and development of the creative economy in Africa and the diaspora. In our relentless pursuit to bridge the gap in creative production value chains, we have implemented targeted interventions aimed at enhancing access to international markets. For instance, since October, 2021, our market access initiative, what we call Connects Presents Africa, has empowered hundreds of luxury African and diaspora brands to showcase their, their brands and their designs. Now I'm talking about designs in the Portugal fashion runways, as well as Paris Fashion Week. Notable among these are some uh, the cloth by Robert Young from Trinidad and Tobago. We have sponsored him as well, the firm as well and Keena Linton by Keena Linton from Jamaica. 
by engaging with these global audiences, bias, media, these brands have not only expanded their, uh, their businesses, business horizons, but they've also played a pivotal role in reshaping perceptions surrounding African products. Some of these interventions help to also give Africans where they are good measure of dignity. In film as well, we're also pursuing initiatives in film for film financing, and some of our projects are film financing studio is in the is also in the Caribbean, in particular Barbados. Our efforts also extend beyond fashion and music, as I've just mentioned. In the creative, it also extends to sports. I had highlighted about sports earlier, gastronomy, arts and culture, and literature. But if I may just focus on um, music a little for a little bit. We are actively fostering music collaborations among artists from Africa and various regions across the globe, sponsoring the collaboration of renowned figures such as the legendary Afro-Brazilian musical band Olodo, who are known for their iconic collaborations with Michael Jackson. And we're currently spearheading a groundbreaking project. This initiative helps to unite talents from Africa and the Caribbean, including Steve Marley from Jamaica, who will be part of that collab. We hope to launch this album kind of next weekend, and it will mark a significant life milestone in propelling Africa and Caribbean creative content into the mainstream spotlight. Let me use the opportunity to invite all of you to join us at Can next weekend that we hold from October 16th to 20th in Algiers, Algeria. As I move on to some of our past facilitation initiatives, um, the by need by the uh, Biennial Intra-African Trade Fair, which holds every two years, brings together continental and global players to showcase and exhibit their goods and services and explore business and investment opportunities in the continent. As you already heard, IATF 2023 held in Cairo last year and it boasted of an impressive display of the diaspora and Caribbean showcase, as Mr. Maharaj, Maharaj just mentioned. We have also, you know, in the interest of time, as I like to move quickly, developed a digital trade ecosystem called the African Trade Gateway, which houses key digital products such as the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System that facilitates trade settlement in local currencies and has been unanimously adopted by 11 Caribbean central banks as a preferred system for processing settlement of intra-regional trade transactions. Also, the Africa Trade Gateway, or ATG, as we call it, houses the Africa Trade Exchange, ATEX, which is a digital marketplace or e-commerce platform. It also houses Trader, which provides trade and trade regulations intelligence. And I did hear Mr. Maharaj talk about a lot of interest in Mansa. And of course, also it includes Mansa, which is a bank's customer due diligence repository platform. Well, welcome also. I'm sure Kay will be maybe talking more about this in due course. In the... As I was saying about okay, Mr. K Chukwi Hejreka, who heads the Afrexim Bank Caribbean office in Barbados, will provide more details about some of the products and initiatives that we offer um, and how they can be assessed. I just what well, this mine was just to give some highlights, and I welcome some of these uh, webinars. You know, as we go along, um, we have to continue to provide the information that is required, you know, um, so that it is um, so that we can get the reach, you know, that we require. As I will look ahead, I'm pleased to extend an invitation to you all to the 31st Afrexim Bank Annual General Meeting, which will take place in Nassau in Bahamas from the June from June 12th to June 15th this year. This gathering will provide a platform for further discussions and collaboration, culminating in the 2024 Africa, Africa Caribbean Trade and Investment Forum, Active 24. This is a good build up to that, this webinar. Together we can build bridges towards a more intercontinental, interconnected and prosperous future for our regions. We have no doubt about that. And we all you know that we can do it. 
We also plan as part of our as events at, on the sidelines of that annual general meeting in Bahamas to plan to hold a factoring roundtable. And this is in a bid, you know, to pursue alternative trade finance programs. And we hope, we hope to hold this on the sidelines of the AGM in Bahamas because factoring supports open accounts on, and on that factoring scheme, it represents cheaper and more efficient or equally efficient but compliant means of financing trade for SMEs. The reason this is important for us and I'm highlighting it is that people will tell you, statistics will show that at least from our statistics in Africa, Africa, I'm not sure what it is in the, like in the Caribbean, 60% or about that of SMEs who walk into banking halls to ask for financing will be rejected. And that's the reason we are supporting alternative finance instruments like factoring. So we have that round table on the sidelines of our annual general meeting on the sidelines of the Africa Caribbean Trade and Investment Forum Active 2024. In closing, I would like to close with the words of the WTO, World Trade Organization, then Director General, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo-Iwala, and all just to hear those words. Trade is not a zero-sum game. When Africa and the Caribbean prosper, the whole world will benefit. So let us work together to unlock the vast potential of our partnership and create a brighter future for generations to come. We appreciate that it will take work, but we are committed to doing the work. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to fruitful discussions ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, EVP Kenayo. Um, just want to appreciate your remarks. Um, it's really great to hear all the programs and projects that the bank has been considering and those already started in the region. Um, I must confess I'm St. Lucian. So when I saw the St. Lucia project was the first, I was like, yay. <laughs> you know, and I was I mentioned to Oki that, you know, it was really great to see um see the 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 governments and countries around the region already um taking heed and, and putting things in place to access um access the funds available. I know some on the call as well would appreciate all what you're doing in the area of the creatives. Um, some of the names I'm sure will garner attention. And I hope Oki or maybe one a member of your team can really speak to how, how those from the region in that space may access or be part of, of Canex. Um, if you allow me, I see Ginger Moxie. She is actually a minister from Grand Bahama. I see her hand up. And she had joined us on our inaugural mission um, last year. So if you allow me, um, Oki, if you if you permit me to just give um, Minister the floor. Minister yes, Moxie, can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, yes. I, I, I just found out about it. And so um, I'm I'm happy to be here. I have to pop off to another meeting, but I, I just wanted to, you know, congratulate you all on the work that's being done. Of course, we would have, um, the Bahamas would have signed an MOU last year for the development of an Afro-Caribbean marketplace with Afrax and Bank. We're in the process now of finalizing the project preparation facility. Um, and so we're really, really excited about that. What that is, it allows all of the African countries and the Caribbean countries to have a pavilion in one place on Grand Bahama Island that allows us to be able to trade, allows us to, um, for the logistics part of it to be able to um, have products centralized and then redistributed to other areas of the world because we have a major transshipment terminal here. So I'm just really excited about that because I think it will be um, play a key role in Africa's presence here with the best of what they have to offer with um, the creative industry, arts, culture, um, and of course, all other Caribbean countries. So I'm very excited about that. And then of course, we have the AGM that's happening here in June in Nassau. And um, I believe we'll be able to speak a lot more about that at that time. Um, and so I'm, I'm really, really excited, uh, excited about what has transpired since the signing 
of um, with all the CARICOM countries back in 2021, I believe it was. And so, um, and then every other, um, I would say, event and mission that has happened since then. I truly um, am proud of the work that um, Caribbean Export Development Agency did in Nigeria and in Ghana. And we've also signed a city city, a sister city relationship with um, Western um, Pakistan, Princess Town, Ghana as well. And so I look forward to all of the work that we will continue to do together. And I want to make sure that all of the African countries are aware that they can have a presence um, of a pavilion with the best of what they have um, in this region um, um, quite um, in, a, in a short period of time. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you so much, Minister. Thank you for joining us. And again, as I mentioned, Minister Moxie from Grand Bahama, the Bahamas, she joined us last year on our mission. And it was really great to have you join us um, quite um, spontaneously, Minister. So we appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, okay, uh, you have the floor now um, to give us some detail about what EVP spoke about. And I, I, I understand you have colleagues on the call as well who may who may offer some support um, where we're applicable. So please go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, Natasha. And uh, good morning from this part of the world to uh, the audience, distinguished audience. So I start by uh, recognizing the protocols, uh, EVP Kanayo, uh, Executive Director, um, for the Caribbean Export Development, Export Promotion Agency, Mr. Diodat, uh, who is also my brother and good friend. Uh, Natasha, Honorable Minister Ginger Mosi, very pleased to have you on the call on short notice. And this actually underscores uh, the importance that you personally place on this initiative of having Africa Caribbean trade foster. So we are very delighted to have you. And to our distinguished audience, uh, we're also delighted to have you join us to learn more uh, about Afraising Bank. So my job today is to bring you up to speed with Afraising Bank, uh, to tell you who the bank is, what we stand for, what we are also looking out to achieve with our mission and venture into the Caribbean, as well as the huge array of programs and facilities that the bank has in stock to be used specifically to support businesses in the Caribbean, just like we have also already done in Africa. Uh, I'll start first of all by introducing the bank. I know we have a vast audience here. A lot of people may know the bank very well, but others may just be getting to know the bank a little bit. So I'll start by giving a brief synopsis on who a present bank is. Um, the, we, we are the Trade Finance Bank for Africa, that's what we, we are set up to do. Having been set up uh, via a study that was commissioned by the African Development Bank, uh, following the debt crisis of the, late 60s, of the late 80s, so there was need to set up a resilient institution that can help the continent to be able to withstand those kind of uh, uh, problems and difficult times that may also reoccur, given that most of them are proven to be cyclical. So the study pointed to the fact that we need to have an exim bank, and as a result of that, the bank was set up uh, precisely in 1993. So actually last year was our 30th anniversary, so we've been operating for 30 plus years. I'll be having our 31st AGM within the Caribbean, and that's also very significant. Uh, the main mandate and vision of the bank is significantly to promote uh, an intra and extra African trade. Since we are the trade finance bank for Africa, ours is to ensure consistent growth in the trade and the, the expansion and the diversification of trade in the region. Uh, I will talk. I will go to the fact that we now, when we're talking about the region, EP has mentioned that we are talking about Africa, not in terms of the geographical location Africa, we're talking about it now as African, because now that expands to include the diaspora as well, and more precisely the, uh, the, the Caribbean region as well, where we have a lot of our brothers. So that's our vision to promote the diversification of trade and to operate uh, a 
as a first class profit oriented, socially responsible financial institution and center of excellence on African trade related matters. We, by virtue of our legal status, are a multilater multilateral finance institution. So we have full judicial personality and legal capacity to operate wherever we are operating. And that is why uh, the first level of intervention would typically be for us to have countries sign up to a partnership agreement to recognize this uh, unique legal status. And this will now enable us work. And our work will now help us do things, you know, work in difficult situations in those countries when other institutions find it difficult to, you know, work in those kind of locations. So we'll be able to take extra risk when difficult times occur. Uh, when we see massive exodus of other fin or foreign financial lenders, we'll be able to stick with those countries knowing that they recognize the unique position we, uh, we occupy. And we, having been created to remedy difficult situations, will also be able to stand by them even at such times. Uh, for our shareholding category, we have four classes. Class A will be for African uh, countries who are partner members of the bank. And in this category, we also include the Africa Development Bank. And we'll have class B, which will also include African financial, African corporate institutions. Uh, class C will be non-African financial institutions, non-African institutions, which typically include the likes of China, XZ, Media, Exim, and the rest. And we have the class D, uh, which is for individuals largely, but currently represented via a depository receipt that is listed in the Mauritius Stock Exchange. Currently, we have 52 member countries in Africa. So that means we have a huge coverage of the continent. And since the uh, historic declaration of the uh, diaspora as the sixth region of Africa and the bank making the decision to lead from the front uh, by coming first to you know open up the way for other willing investors from both regions to take advantage of uh, this unique declaration by the African Union and the CARICOM Secretariat. We have also ventured into the uh, region, uh, starting with the CARICOM region. And as EPP highlighted, we do have currently 11 out of the 15 CARICOM member states as partner members of the bank. So meaning that we can uh, uh, actually work uh, in those countries who have signed up and ratified our membership agreement. In terms of location, we have uh, six locations, basically starting with Cairo, where our headquarters is, and then uh, in alphabetical orders, we take Abidjan, covering the Francophone West Africa, Abuja for the Anglophone West Africa, Harare, Zimbabwe is covering the Southern Africa market, Kampala is for the Eastern Africa market, and uh, Yaounde is for the Central Africa market. And the most Important, the most important one, which is also related to why we are here today, is the branch in Bridgetown, Barbados, which covers the CARICOM region. So the bank is an investment rated, rated institution. So that means we are capable of utilizing this to the advantage of member countries in terms of raising capital and in terms of also taking risk assets that we deem to have qualified. Uh, the bank has since evolved. We're no longer talking about the bank as, an, as a single entity, but driven by the specific needs that we've seen arise from all our interaction. We feel the business of promoting and expanding trade will require also creating subsidiaries uh, with specific mandates as well to help boost this particular drive. So as a result, we have created a uh, couple of subsidiaries uh, typical is the FEDA, Funds for Export Development in uh, Africa. And one significant news about that is that uh, only last week on the sideline of uh, board meetings, the FEDA was launched formally to operate out of Rwanda. And so we'll talk about that in details during the presentation about what we can do. We also have the Africa Insure, which is our insurance arm. Uh, Africa Med Medical Center of Excellence, Africa Quality Assurance Center. These are all subsidiaries that the bank has set up. Um, you know, instructive us as well to ensure, uh, you know, mention that AMCE has also been launched recently. 
So that means we mean business with some of these initiatives. And beside them will be some other initiatives. There are quite a lot, but I'll mention very few. Uh, one of them we'll talk about later on is the pan africa Payment and Settlement System, uh, MANSA, uh, Africa Trade Exchange, the Trader Club, and the rest. So we'll talk about them in details when we highlight the key products and facilities that the bank uh, has. Still introducing the bank, I will not fail to also mention the uh, what drives most of the engagements that we have. So which will be the strategic pillar we run. Uh, the current strategic plan is going to expire on the, in 2026. So it's called extending the uh, plan 2020, in part 2026, extending the frontiers. So it's, going to, it's running between 2022 up to 2026 and stands on four core pillars. The first will be the intra-African trade and FCFTA implementation. Uh, the second is the industrialization and export development. Well, well maybe if I may give a, bit, a brief on each of them. So the intra-African trade, as at the time this initiative was created and uh, in 20, 2016 and ably led by EVP Kanayo, the, the figures for intra-African trade was abysmally low. If not, you know, South Africa, we found out was trading more with others other than itself. So this initiative is actually aimed at supporting us to be able to address this significant gap and to be able to open the floodgate of uh, ability to trade between ourselves. And uh, part of the key pillars, uh, part of the key uh, verticals of that is pillar, of course, is the diaspora strategy, which uh, EVP Canada has talked about, which has also led us to expand the frontiers just beyond the geographic Africa into the Caribbean. And it will be our uh, desire to, just like we are seeing steady increase in intra-African trade numbers, also see a huge growth in terms of the trade between Africa and the Caribbean. Uh, the other pillar, of course, is the industrialization and export development. Um, under this, of course, we are looking at how we can create value-added export, uh, given that historically the continent has been uh, exporting for commodities in raw form, uh, which means, I mean, also our value chain, the takeaway from the value chain also is significantly limited. But we value added export, we return more value, we also return uh, more in terms of the additional value that come from it, including employment opportunities. Uh, the top pillar is leadership in global trade finance banking in Africa. And the fourth is the financial sustainability uh, pillar, which is for, uh, of an internal pillar that helps us keep an eye on our operation, given that we are a self-regulated institution, to also ensure that we operate in line with global best practice. So what will you find out in the product that we talk about is the fact that most of them uh, align with some of these pillars, because I think that is the overriding guide under which we develop these programs and you know, implement them accordingly. So talking a bit about the intra-African strategy, I think EPP has hammered a lot on that. So uh, I, will, I will not dwell so much on that until I get into the programs. But uh, I would just want to take a brief, of, a, a brief moment to reflect the Africa-Caribbean trade and investment relation, uh, the journey so far, where we find ourselves here. So we believe Africa and the Caribbean, we, because share a huge history, which spans centuries. Uh, we know that despite this, historically trade and investment relationship between these three joints have been minimal, if not non-existent. Uh, we, we know that uh, you know, this actually has a result of the fact that this particular very important uh, concept has not received the needed attention that it requires, so which is why the Africa-Caribbean Trade Investment Forum, which is something that we talked about, is part of the, the, the vision to talk about it and say, how can we significantly improve on this area? Uh, we know also that there are also trade barriers, including lack of direct flights, lack of sea, direct sea uh, links you know, between the two regions. So that means, for instance, even though somebody in Ghana has visa-free assets, assets to Barbados, 
they may not be able to come in freely to have their honeymoon, to have their birthdays, simply because the countries that they will be required to transit through, we ask them to provide a transit visa, and that might be a challenge. So these are the things that we've realized and we're trying to focus on to say how we can provide solutions to as a means of smoothing things out and improving relationship between these two regions. Um, we also know that uh, we talked about trade, uh, trade uh, agreements. We also know that between the African countries and regional blocs, agreements have actually been with other parts of the world, but limited between Africa and the Caribbean. So it makes sense that we bring that in the front burner to see how we can create uh, significant solutions to that. Um, we, we, we also want to highlight the fact that uh, from available statistics, uh, I think putting the International Trade Center right now, we see 0.1% of Africa exports being imported in the Caribbean and less than 1% coming from the Caribbean in Africa. I think this needs to attract um, a lot more attention or we need to find a solution to it. Um, approximately 70% of Africa exports to the Caribbean are primarily you know, in mineral form, and that is the fact why the Caribbean exports chemical. But there are other products that are within the region that can actually get acceptance, immediate acceptance to the, the African continent, including uh, rum and some other products that are related to uh, you know, that produced here that can actually gain access. Things around um, auto care products that are produced in some countries here can actually get huge markets within the continent. Unfortunately, Northern and Southern African countries have closer link with other countries than within Africa itself. So we've highlighted that. And we need to make sure that we try and find a solution to this particular one, this particular issue. Uh, including tackling uh, the issue of lack of bilateral trade agreements between the regions. So we we can actually uh, see that that happens. I'm happy Natasha talked about the trade mission and I think Dilda talked about that as well. I'm happy that these are happening. Those are going to be the precursors to us now seeing bilateral agreements in place. Uh, once the regulatory support from the government to support some of the initiatives uh, that can enhance trade between the region, as well as trying to find ways also to manage transport-related costs between this uh, region. Um, so there's work to be done by everybody, and I think the starting point is for us to see this vision as something that a vision that is possible that needs to be done. And once we realize how important it is to create resilience between the two regions, if we are able to create this huge partnership among ourselves, then we will definitely be able to now take uh, a, a bigger look and be able to find better solutions to it. With the African uh, African Bank Caribbean Initiative, we've actually, like I said earlier, made the decision to be from the front. Um, I know previously this is something that has received uh, some kind of, I wouldn't say lip service, but people have talked a lot about it, but there are there wasn't any action taken on that. So for us, uh, thanks to the board of the bank, thanks to the president and thanks to the EVP who has also led the initiative, we are working the talk. And this is actually why you see that within uh, a couple of years of seeing of, you know, the declaration um, between CARICOM and AU, we have seen a lot transpire between them. So first of all, we have seen two editions of ACTIVE, uh, Africa Caribbean Trade and Investment Forum happen. We have seen the launch of the regional office here in Barbados. Uh, we've also witnessed the first disbursement to St. Lucia, which is a landmark disbursement for us. Um, the partnership agreement, like I said, we level have signed and we're looking forward to uh, getting the others to join. And, and the important point, of course, is that uh, the board of directors of the bank actually approved $1.5 billion initial limit size for the region. And this is expected to get into $3 billion once we are able to get the 15 CARICOM countries in the fold. So that means there's a lot to benefit from it. And that means also that we mean business in ensuring that our coming here 
translates to actual action and not just word of mouth. We've also seen, made the presentation uh, on PAPS to the committee of the central banks, and we're in the process of getting them adopt the PAPS as a preferred interregional uh, payment platform to foster trade within the region. And I will not end the initial talk about the Afro-Caribbean initiative without mentioning the job that the bank did uh, during the COVID-19 vaccine acquisition process. Uh, when we noticed that, of course, a lot of you know, ge geopolitics came into play with, in terms of allocating vaccines, but Africa and Caribbean countries came together through the, the African medical supply platform to create a, a pooled resource system where we are able to order vaccines for ourselves, for the citizens together. And Afrasian Bank, in the spirit of leading from the front, also put, uh, put down a $2 billion guarantee to Johnson & Johnson to facilitate that vaccine allocation. So that means we were able to you know, uh, go against the initial practice of you know, going cap in hand, looking for who would give us vaccines uh, you know, as grants, by now saying we can do it on our own and we actually did it on our own. And what this also tells me is that if we foster this relationship, we will definitely become a force to reckon with in global matters. Now, um, I want to go into a present bank instrument of intervention. And what I want to also say before I go into details is that this is something that's worked exceedingly well in the continent Africa. And we note similarities between Africa and the region in terms of what the needs are, in terms of the level of development that is required. And that is why we're also optimistic that some of these products will you know, find ready acceptance within the region once uh, we go into them. Uh, a quick overview of some of the product offerings. Um, is the fact that we have the trade finance facility, which is, we are a trade finance bank. We have lines of credit, which we can provide to uh, to banks, to corporates. We have syndication and agency capability, where we can also use our unique positioning to arrange huge amounts of loans for companies that might require it. Uh, note that note purchase direct financing facilities are also available. We'll talk about them in a bit more details. Uh, we have future flow financing, where we're also able to take, um, we take collateral on flows that are going to come in later on and use that as a basis for us to finance countries, finance companies. Uh, receivable, and that's closely linked with the receivable, receivable purchase and discounting. Uh, asset back lending, that is also something that we can deliver here, um, we have a huge sort of project-related um, export development programs, which we can also talk about in a little more details, as well as ECL loans and other products related to uh, hotel and the tourism sector, which definitely is relevant to this region, notable for the tourism potentials and capabilities. Um, so Telomid Trade Solutions, these are the, the key deliverables that we have. And I will also point out that, please, if you have any question based on any uh, of the products I've highlighted, we'll be happy to take them on at the end of the day. Uh, I have my colleagues who are the subject matter experts in some of these product areas on standby to provide more detailed insight as may be required you know, to answer any questions that come up. So the short-term trade solution, um, we have trade, we have a program that we created which we call AFTRAF, Appraising Trade Facilitation Program. So this is dedicated to support banks with provision of trade finance lines, which can be used for letter of credit confirmation, uh, issuance of irrevocable reimbursement undertaking, uh, provision of bonds, guarantees, and indemnities, and other short-term financing solutions to help these banks also support their corporate clients who will definitely need this product. And this is very important because we note that some of the global banks, uh, just like what has happened in Africa also, I know it happened in the Caribbean, will embark on a huge de-risking exercise where 
lines of credit we are cut, trade finance, uh, corresponding banking services were withdrawn because of heightened compliance challenges. And these products and initiatives that we've created here are directly uh, targeted as supporting intervention in this area. So we have the AFPA as well as linked to that. So that can enable us support uh, companies to be able to pay directly for uh, importation of essential goods into the country and ensure that as a result of the withdrawal of the corresponding banking services, that the trade activities of these institutions do not get negatively impacted upon. Um, we've talked about the, the AFTRA, which has a guarantee component, but very important also is that we can also provide this guarantee service to the corporates directly to provide support to them, those who have contracts to execute, those who have one form of uh, road construction project that they need to bid for and the rest. So we have a suite of guarantee products which we can deliver to them to be able to be used you know, specifically for uh, achieving success in these areas. Um, we can also do what we call, uh, we, can, we, use, we have a local administrative agent facility initiative. And I want to talk about this because sometimes when people see us get into regions, they might think we'll come in to compete with the local banks. No, competition is not a word that is available in our dictionary. We actually see ourselves as partners to these local institutions. And why we're seeing as partners is the fact that we understand they could be constrained from time to time in their capability to support corporates due to single obligor limits, due to some other restrictions. Uh, we will be able to come in to support them, provide some kind of co-financing arrangement with them, uh, bring them into our syndication, or even when we have agreed on the direct financing, we use them as a local administrative agent because we are operating from limited locations and they, we recognize the impact of the local banks who will be on ground and who have uh, more granular, granular knowledge of the markets where we're operating and the roles that they can play. So we use them significantly to play this role and we are open to doing the same within the, 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 the region. So, uh, alongside this short-term financing, we also uh, have them on a long-term basis. I won't dwell so much on them because the explanations are very much key and related to the original one. Uh, so this can enable us also go beyond the short-term uh, financing of typical one to two years and go further, you know, depending on the tenor that's been proposed. Um, we go into the supply chain finance solution. So this is something that we also think would be very useful. A Frozen Bank recently launched uh, what we call the trade link, which is something that we can use for invoice discounting and receivable financing. We take the risk of, uh, you know, we use that as part of our SME intervention scheme where we take the risk of the bigger company who uh, has a, 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 a term financing deal with some of their suppliers to provide intermediate financing to those SMEs that supply to the big companies to enable them to have you know, liquidity earlier on within the value chain so that they can do more instead of having to wait for the five days, 60 days for their invoices to match up. So this is something that we also are happy to bring here. Um, for the longer term, we can do lines of credit uh, to be on the Dual recourse or non-dual recourse. Dual recourse means if you look at the financing, it's, it, it, the obligo and their balance sheet can take this kind of support. We can fund them directly, but we can also take dual recourse on other entities who can provide support on their back as guarantors to be able to provide financing to some of these other entities. Um, we have been able to significantly use our guarantee products also to raise liquidity where necessary. Uh, we have done that successfully in a lot of African countries where uh, we can guarantee notes that have been raised. And these notes cannot be purchased by willing investors who cannot put down funds. And that becomes a smart solution to help companies, help countries to be able to raise cheap funding through the fact that the Bank has provided guarantee. 
uh, I'll go into what we do under the Inter-African Trade Bank. I'm conscious of the fact that we need to also keep to time. Uh, we have some of the key facilitation initi initiatives in the Africa, Afri under the IATB, uh, the fact that we have programs uh, under the African Collaborative Transit Guarantee Scheme, which is something that should help us uh, remove the bottleneck that we are here to encounter, you know, moving goods from one port to the other. You know, we have 54 of such within the African continent. So if a good needs to go from one country, let's say South Africa to Zambia, and it has to go through two or three countries, for instance, each of those countries will encounter delays asking for, for, for payment of duties and the rest. So through our guarantee, they can let the goods go and then the, the, uh, the duties cannot be paid to the port. So it smoothens things out. The automotive strategy is something that we also think is very important for the region. And uh, it helps the, promote the regional automotive value chain you know, to ensure that the supply chain uh, financing for uh, the auto industry is not negatively impacted. So we have that. And the creative Africa, creative economy strategy for us also means we can do a lot within the creative space to support capacity building activities, uh, exports and investment promotion. EDP talked about how we were able to take um, some creative, some people from the creative side, you know, to the global stage, to taking them to global events where they get identified and we provide financing once they get signed up, you know, by some high street companies. So that's an initiative on that creative strategy. Uh, we create, the, we look at the digital solution. We know the world is going digital. We are trying to also see the film financing facility uh, abilities also to support the music industry, the arts, craft, and fashion, as well as fashion designing is something that we think we can achieve through a creative strategy under the Inter-African Trade Bank. Uh, of course, the diaspora initiative, we've talked about that. That is why uh, where we are currently, that is why we are venturing to see that just like what we've done in Africa, boosting African number, the numbers of African trade, we're also going to, through this strategy, boost the numbers, of the, the numbers in terms of the trade between Africa and the Caribbean, and indeed the diaspora. So these are some of the key financing instruments uh, to, to support some of this initiative I've talked about. So we, have, we can provide uh, global facilities to intra-champs. So intra-champs could be companies that are into various areas. Uh, we provide a global facility to support each of the subsidiaries in the various areas they need to venture in and uh, support them to go into some of those areas uh, seamlessly taking advantage of the fact that the global facility is available to them. Uh, we have the Inter-African Investment Finance. So we, we are looking to use this facility also to provide uh, direct investment uh, to, the Afri to, to, the, uh, to the diaspora who may also want to invest in the country. Uh, the country guarantee program and the contract related uh, Financing also will help us to finance a wide range of investment opportunities that may come. And in fact, some, one of the key parties here will be who we call the intra champs, who we can support to be able to go into areas uh, and go into financing uh, and go into business areas where they need to do new businesses. I'll go very quickly as well. I know we are very much pressed for time and we have a couple of sessions to go into. Uh, uh, the other areas we can talk about is we have support for the project uh, under the project and asset-based financing. What we focus on is important to highlight uh, trade-related projects, trade-related infrastructure, and we can look at them things like around the port, things around uh, the airport, things around hotels. Those will be of interest to us because those are things that have capacity to boost trade. Uh, we will be able to use this financing possibility to support it. Uh, we also have projects in the airport development side, which uh, we can look at a possibility of creating the 
export processing centers. We've created similar projects in a lot of countries in Africa currently. And we know that geographical location of the Caribbean uh, can enable such investment boom, in a boom because of the access to the South American and North American markets, leveraging the Caribbean region. So this is something that can happen. And we also have an SME program where we are able to look at companies that, are, that have a lower turnover level, so that we can also take advantage of. Um, we have the project preparation facility. Project preparation enables companies that have uh, projects that they want to execute to be able to assess the financing to do the first level jobs that needs to happen. Uh, Minister Ginger Moxie has talked about the fact that they are looking to assess these projects for the uh, big project that they have in the Bahama, which is something that we think we can take advantage of. Um, now, I'll go quickly into the ATEX, which is the digital solution. We can agree definitely that the world has gone digital. And of course, Appraising Bank now decided to create this um, Appraising Bank uh, digital solution, where we're able to create like a, an ecosystem of the products that you know, can leverage on the digital platform. So under this, we have what we call the ATEX, Appraising Trade Exchange, where it is like a marketplace where people can uh, aggregate uh, demands and then we have confirmed buyers and confirmed sellers within the platform who can take advantage of the platform to easily trade among themselves and identify uh, possibilities where they exist. The Manstar Digital Platform is a, pla is a platform that is dedicated to solving the KYC issues the continent has faced and we think it's some, something that we can achieve. With the support of uh, Caribbean Sports, we'll be able to get all the SMEs within their pool to sign up to this platform to provide information about them, to make it easier also for those willing to do business with them to be able to uh, get information about them. And then we have the, the trader market intelligence system, which also is very unique for us to be able to provide country level information, not just country about what can be done within the country, but about the regulations in the countries that can inhibit or you know, promote any kind of trade initiatives as there. Um, I've talked about FAPS as well. FAPS, with the idea we want to re remove the, the over, over, over dependence on the USD for trade and be able to create a solution where payments can happen outside the USD value chain. And you know, effectively, people can make payments in their local currencies and the rest. Um, we, we can also get involved in certification facilities. I won't talk so much about that. Uh, as well as we have the suite of products on the, on the treasury financing side, uh, where we're also able to raise uh, financing, uh, offering very good rates, as well as providing some other risk um, instruments in the treasury side, including hedging for commodity and FPS limited hedging to support businesses in whatever they want to do. Um, we, we are also very much active in the capital market space where we can help package for, uh, you know, be the lead for uh, capital raise efforts for member countries, um, as well as advisory services. That's also one of the key areas where we are significantly active and we can provide support within the Caribbean. Um, so that's in a nutshell some of the products uh, that we have. We'll be on standby to take on questions as they come. Uh, I know we have highlighted a few that we think is relevant within the Caribbean, including things around hotel construction, our SME development program, the CANEX, uh, as well as uh, taking advantage of the forums, the Inter-African Trade Fair, Inter-African African Caribbean Trade and Investment Forum, and the rest. So these are something that we can get more information on if the interest exists. Uh, we will leave a contact here for those who want to reach out. We'll be more than happy to provide responses in very good time once they come in uh, from the Barbados office. And I think uh, before I end, it's just also to highlight some of the key dates that we have highlighted for the year, we are, and the key events that the bank will be undertaking, where we'll, we'll be happy, happy to have the distinguished audience here, you know, take advantage of and be present. Uh, on that note, I thank you very much for your time. And we'll be on standby to take questions as they may come. Thank you so much.
Uh, thank you so much, Oki, for this very detailed um, presentation. I know um, we're short on time and we have lots of questions in the chat. Um, before I pass the floor to Dave, perhaps your team can um, maybe, uh, you know, amongst themselves decide who may come back and answer maybe in one go questions such as the types of projects, um, how the project preparation facility works, if there are any specific sectors that you're looking at, or if you're sector agnostic, you know, these sort of top, top um, high level um, questions. Um, we have a few questions about the financing. So I think a lot of our companies are very interested in, in it precisely how to access um, that, that sort of support. Um, so Dave, over to you. Um, we will hear from Dave Sahadat, who is who is the founder and director of Global Business Development, Global Integrated Fintech Solutions, businessman himself. He joined us on our mission to Accra. And so, Dave, if we can ask you to just speak about your experience, your insights, um, doing business with the continent, you know, how you decided to, to, to go about that and, you know, addressing issues such as knowing your your client, the, the KYCs, et cetera. Over to so, you. Thank, thank you so very much, Natasha. And always a pleasure to be in such a distinguished company, um, such as uh, Diadat and the entire team. And of course, uh, OK, and um, the rest of his distinguished colleagues, um, like Kayo, Awani, and um, everyone else that's here. Thank you so very much. Of course, um, we had some very informative presentations and um, led by the bank. And what I intend to do today is to share from both my experience and my perspective as to doing business in Africa. First of all, the salutation and greeting, welcome home, never meant so much to me as when I heard it for the first time going on the continent of Africa and visiting there. While I've heard that salutation, while returning to the United States, where I'm domiciled, where it's to Barbados, to Trinidad or Guyana, to me, hearing that uh, was a heartwarming experience. And I, I felt a sense of belonging having heard that. And I knew that I was heading in the right direction at the right time. Prior to um, my first trip to Africa uh, seven years ago, it has always been a place that had fascinated me being an avid student of history. And so it was a great pleasure that, that I was able to visit. And while uh, prior, our first real meaningful inroad into Africa was through that of uh, a joint initiative that was sponsored by the Caribbean Export and Development Bank uh, no, sorry, Caribbean Export and Development Agency, which um, even preceded the trade mission into Ghana. Uh, they sponsored, and we certainly had our first uh, contract signing in Nigeria, and this was facilitated. However, I can say it opened up uh, a lot of other opportunities not just in Ghana, but across Africa. I'm happy to report that having origins of the company in Barbados, we have now spread our wings, whereby we are currently either in contract with or negotiating in seven different African countries. And I can say to anyone that is interested um, right now that both Caribbean Export and Development Agency, as well as uh, the, 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 the bank, um, they are willing partners. Uh, I've always found an open door to whether it was to discuss ideas, receive counsel from both their dad and the entire team, as well as uh, OK there in Barbados. Um, having been in a seminar and a forum with him, I visited Barbados and they welcomed me with uh, open arms and gave quite great advice. And so if one is thinking about uh, embarking on any type of trade or establishing anything, I would um, first and foremost recommend that they approach these two great organizations. Having said that, um, I want to cite some things that you might or might not know. Of course, some people may say, well, why Africa? We personally, as a business, have taken a conscious decision 
to focus more on Africa than anywhere else. And that's where uh, our efforts are, are currently being directed. Why Africa? 1.3 billion people. They have, believe it or not, uh, one of the youngest and healthiest populations to be found anywhere on the planet. Not to mention the fact that I have found in Africa, in all of my dealings, some of the brightest, motivated young people that you'll meet at any, in any other part of the world. However, what I would caution in terms of anyone looking to enter the market space there and go into Africa that do not make certain fundamental mistakes. I remember moving as a young man to the United States and saying to them that I was from Barbados and they asked what part of Jamaica was that, meaning it just signaled you know, the, 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 the ignorance that existed and was pervasive to believe that the Caribbean was all one place and that we're on. Similarly, in Africa, one big continent, yes, but a diverse continent. While 1.3 billion people, um, they are both, they are all, each country is diverse in terms of its culture. In some cases, of course, you know that we have what's called the Francophone countries, those that were ruled by France, et cetera. And um, never ever make the mistake to believe that uh, if you can do business in one African country, you can do business in all. My first uh, advice, you know, to anyone seeking to do business is number one to number one, do your market research. Don't make assumptions. I was pleasantly surprised as one who is in the fintech space to recognize how advanced many African countries were as far as digital technology are concerned. We should not adopt that as I as as uh, I would want to call it that eurocentric eurocentric type of approach whereby we are coming to educate and bring something that Africa does not already have. I think that uh, that's a mistake. And one thing that one has to do is certainly to understand uh, the country, do your research and see exactly if there's actually a need for the products and services that you wanna provide. Secondly, it is quite important and another great piece of advice I believe would be not to try to go it alone. They have been, there are so many instances of companies that have tried to have gone into Africa to try to reinvent the wheel in various African countries, be it Nigeria, Ghana, um, Sierra Leone, wherever. And they've tried to do it their way. In other words, bring in, bring in a Western way of doing business and a Western culture and expecting it to fit um, within Africa. It does not work. My best advice is to number one, to find credible partners to work with, ones that are already working in a similar sector that you are currently um, seeking to enter the market with and form a strategic alliance. I believe that that will cut down on time significantly, time to market. Also, uh, with respect to the number of contacts and uh, both in many instances, for choosing that partner that has the requisite governmental uh, links as well as both private sector to really help usher and ensure that you are successful. The other thing is that as a part of that, one should always seek to optimize the talent available there in Africa as opposed to trying to bring everything as far as human resource from external. Certainly, um, I'm practicing what I, I, I preach because I've been so impressed with uh, the level of sophistication and also the eagerness and the, the, the earnest manner in which many of our brothers and sisters in the African continent go about uh, performing their duties. And um, a good example of that, currently, we are working with, well, first of all, in Ghana, um, I have you know, my executive assistant who works, who's been working with me for the last two years is domicile in Ghana. Um, we now have um, a, a consultant 
um, who is also domiciled in, in, in Ghana, and we are hoping that he will, you know, join our our ranks, you know, on a, on a full time basis. We have um, in, in in Sierra Leone, um, you know, similar as we have registered offices there as well. So the whole idea, as I said, is to ensure that we tr we, we we take advantage of what is there without necessarily trying to bring from without, because a lot of what you may what we may need is already there. I would also encourage um those you know seeking to 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 enter the market to understand uh, the regulatory framework um it is not one country uh it varies you know in so many different ways so it's important to understand um you know the regulatory framework is important to understand the infrastructure it is important you know to uh understand the taxation laws you know, do those countries have double taxation treaties with the country that you're domiciled in? And basically, um, understanding things such as intellectual property rights and 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 do they exist? Um, these are some of the things quite uh, worthy of consideration. Of course, just to backtrack a bit and um, um, having one of the things that 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 came out by the way of of taking part in uh, a, tr a trade mission such as the one sponsored by Caribbean Export and Development Agency is that we actually were able to sign an agreement with uh, the Ghana Chamber of Commerce. Since then, we have also gone on to sign one with the, the Chamber of Commerce with the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So uh, I can attribute uh, a, a lot of this in terms of the involvement with both the Afrimix Bank and um, Caribbean Export and Development Agency. Um, moving, you know, right along, um, some of the things that we also need to look at is analyzing, you know, your product, understanding what the continent needs. All right, there are several areas that um, I can highlight. I think that, you know, certainly agriculture, agro-processing, uh, I believe there's great need for that. Uh, the real estate market in Africa is one that has great needs in terms of housing, and certainly those in the area of of, of um, real estate, housing development, um, putting together systems like that, that is definitely a need. I think there's also a need in the space that I play prominently in, which is uh, technology. However, not from, you would be pleasantly surprised that within the payments and the payment infrastructure place, Africa is light years ahead, ahead of the Caribbean with being able to adopt things like mobile money. Um, we cannot go in and um, whereby they are rejecting in many instances, uh, a lot of the, the traditional networks and practices. And I'm so, so pleased to understand uh, and, and and to have been introduced to the Pan-African payment system because I believe that that in itself is going to open up many, many, many doors for businesses seeking to do bilateral world trade um, across Africa. Um, it, is in, it is important to understand that Africa adopts, has adopted and, will, and continues to adopt uh, at a very fast rate as far as uh, digital and digital technologies, and so it's, it's, it's definitely a way to go. Along the lines of the bank, I think it is great if we are able to um, understand a bit more um, as, as OK so, so thoroughly shared about how we, can how we can utilize trade instruments, things like standby letters of credit, et cetera, to get projects off the ground. I was extremely pleased to understand to, to, to note of the fact that they'll be supporting things like um, factoring, which is um, mm -hmm. a little common practice in, in, in North America and Europe, not so common um, in, 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 in the Caribbean as it relates to doing trade. So very pleased to know that it's doing that. And that leads up to the whole idea of, of, of funding. And one must make sure that you are able to have strategic alliances and understand that when you are looking to enter into any new market, that is necessary to have strong banking or financial relationships in order to do so. 
Um, make sure that whatever you're doing is is is, is sustainable. Um, you know, Africa is the place to be for the future. It is rapidly developing. It is rapidly evolving. And so in whatever it is that you're contemplating, sustainability has to be it. Um, so many other things that I can dwell on, but in the interest of time, um, I am going to you know cut short, but basically want to say to you that I cannot think of a better marketplace than anyone that is contemplating growth and expansion uh, to uh, th than the continent of Africa. As I said, it is diverse, uh, it is different, it is fascinating. Uh, if one, most people from the Caribbean had to be blindfolded and just um, by airplane and just taken to Africa, upon removing the blindfolds, I think many would probably say that where in the Caribbean am I? And it certainly speaks to our, our linkages. And um, I think that um, to coin the phrase from the Honorable Mia Moore Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados, is that we have to reclaim our Atlantic destiny. I think the time is now. I think that uh, like so many people, I hear complaints about different um, parts of Asia and various Asian uh, countries that are dominating the scene in Africa. And I say, what are we going to do about it? As entrepreneurs, as business people, are we going to sit back and complain that others are perhaps stealing a part of our heritage, uh, if you would, as some people put it? Or, as, or are, are we going to take advantage of some of the opportunities available through the Afromix Bank, Africa Import Export Bank, through Caribbean Export and Development Agency? Are we going to truly strategize as a, a people to come together to make this a reality. Look, I can tell you that from my experience, Africans are, are very welcoming towards their Caribbean brothers and sisters. They're keen to create those linkages. They're keen to visit us as we, as we are to visit them. And therefore, I want to implore anyone who's contemplating to get your information, get your knowledge, utilize the resources that are available and get smart and get going. You'll find that other businesses such as ours are more than willing to, 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 to share of our experience, to perhaps you know approach collaboration as, as, as we are doing and we are doing, as I said, we are now in countries and hope to be in um, more uh, by the end of this coming year. So I will implore you that instead of standing on the sideline to embrace the opportunities that are being afforded to us through the bank, through Caribbean Exporting Development Agency, and let's together see how we can make Pan-Africanism a true reality. Thank you so much, Natasha. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Dave. Um, thank you for those those practical insights. Um, and of course, I see, I mean, you you clearly moved and like you when we got to Accra last year and they said, welcome home. It, it really was was um, something that I, you know, for some of us, it, it was moving. So um, thank you for that and for remembering and, you know, compelling us to, to really take action to do business. Um, I am very conscious of time. We've had several questions in the chat. Um, I want to apologize um in advance for not reading the questions and identifying who would have asked it but i what i have sought to do is to really summarize um because some of the questions are similar so i will ask okay i don't know if you've identified somebody from your team who will speak to the issues but we've had a few questions around film music fashion already people have reached out to me on linkedin to ask some questions as well so i will um just pose the questions that you know I've identified and perhaps okay you can you can you or your team can take the floor so we're on the Canex and film music and fashion how to, do they be part of that are there specific projects on renewable energy that have been identified also a question around the blue economy um shipping um ceilings as well um, there's also a question about youth support, youth entrepreneurship, and agriculture is another topic that I've seen. 
And lastly, there is a specific question on Haiti. And I, I can't recall at this time if they've signed the agreement, um, the partnership agreement, but someone wants to know if there's any um, consideration for support to Haiti, of obviously with the crisis um, that they're facing right now, if there's anything directly um, get for them. So, okay, um, your team, I see Lizanne has started to answer some questions in the chat, um, but I will ask you or your team if you could perhaps um, look at these five questions before we, we, we close. Okay, thank you very much, Natasha. Um, so maybe let me start with Haiti. They, they are, they're they not yet a member country uh, of the bank. They haven't signed a partnership agreement, uh, but we do look forward to them signing very soon so that we can also see how we can intervene in the country with our financial instruments, basically. You know, that's what we can do for them. Uh, and for the other questions, maybe I'll let my colleagues step in um, to talk more about some of the areas that we highlighted in the questioning. Uh, but what I want to also, you know, highlight is that we can provide some responses. I know because of time, we may not be able to address each of the questions one by one, but we can provide answers to them if we get a list, and that can sure. be shared with those who yeah. have the questions uh, yeah. to give them more insight. So maybe if I can, I can invite, um, um, maybe let me start with Zito on the project preparation facility. Mm -hmm. Good evening and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Zito Alpayo, head of the project preparation unit based here in Cairo. Um, I'll briefly go through the project preparation facility. In essence, uh, we particularly intervene at the pre-investment stage. And this is the point at which when our project developers and sponsors are putting together the full suite of project documentation before they can approach potential uh, debt financiers or equity investors. And typically, this suite of documentation entails bankability studies, uh, information memorandums, environmental and social impact assessment reports, financial models, et cetera. Uh, also, it requires the engagement of transaction advisors. Uh, this could be financial advisors, uh, legal, uh, external, external legal counsel, and also technical consultants. Uh, last but not least, uh, it also entails last mile expenses because once you've put together the full suite of documentation and you engage potential equity investors and debt financiers, there's some due diligences that need to be undertaken. Again, uh, through the project preparation facility, we can support some of these activities. Um, what we've tried to do is uh, come up with a product that's uh, fit for purpose and appropriate. Uh, we're happy to support uh, African investors keen to invest in the Caribbean. We're also happy to support Caribbean investors keen to invest in Africa. We're happy to support uh, Caribbean investors that are also investing in the Caribbean and also African investors that are investing in Africa. So we're trying to support uh, both uh, bi-directional flows of trade. In terms of sectors, we have two broad windows of intervention. We have what we call trade enabling infrastructure window. Uh, this primarily supports energy transactions. This could be renewable power projects, uh, which alludes to the question that was asked, and also thermal power projects. We also support uh, transport and logistics. Uh, these are projects in the sectors of uh, railways, uh, maritime transport, air transport, and roads. We also support ICT, ICT-related projects. The other key window of intervention is uh, what we call manufacturing and service exports. And the primary sectors that we support in this regard are hospitality and tourism, agro-processing, uh, the development of industrial parks, healthcare facilities, vaccine manufacturing, or any sector that has an export development angle or a value added component. The product primarily uh, in terms of the commercial features, we can avail a facility of up to $3 million per project. We've capitalized interest so that it can be most suitable during the development phase of the project. Uh, the 10 of the facilities up to three years, the primary currency of the facility could be either in dollars or euros or an approved currency. We typically expect our developers and sponsors to stand by their projects, and this is typically expected to be in the form of personal guarantees or corporate guarantees. And uh, we typically expect our developers and sponsors to commit at least 
of the equity into the project preparation phase. Again, as a demonstration of their commitment and skin in the game with regards to uh, taking this project forward. And uh, I'll pause there for now in the interest of time. I'm happy to take any, any more questions to see how best we can, uh, we can support them. And uh, just to uh, build on what Minister Moxie said, I was very excited of the opportunity to be part of the Afro-Caribbean project. It's one of the key priority projects that we're supporting, and we look forward to closing it in time for the for the AGM in June. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Zito. Um, okay, anyone else from your team? Maybe the Canex question on the creative side? Yes, please. Um, so, Temwa, Temwa, mm. you're on the call. I'll need Temwa to um, raise yeah. a question on Canex. Hi, Temwa, uh, go ahead. Yes. Hello. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, moderator, and thank you, okay. Um, in terms of the Creative Africa Nexus program, our key focus sectors are fashion, film, music, arts and crafts, gastronomy, literature. Um, I hope I've covered all of them there. Uh, um, we have a number of areas of intervention, um, and it's important that I give this overview uh, so that you, there's an understanding of what uh, our interventions to improve or to enhance the creative and cultural industries uh, are. We have a number of pillars upon which our, our Creative Africa Nexus program hinges. So we have financing, we have uh, capacity building, we have linkages and partnerships, we have digital solutions, we have export and investment promotion, and then also uh, policy advocacy. So when it comes to financing, we do intervene in terms of uh, uh, credit, that's direct and indirect, um, we have a venture window uh, that is currently uh, under development. Uh, we also have a film fund that is uh, also expected to come on, on stream uh, this year. And of course, uh, provision of uh, uh, guarantees. We're also looking at uh, a cooperatives model. Uh, and maybe this might apply uh, to, the Carib to the Caribbean, whereby um, SMEs come together and create a cooperative uh, in order to uh, 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 build up economies of scale and access, being being able to access uh, products um, much more easier, but also to um, uh, um, uh, take advantage of more efficient distribution channels. So we're looking at that uh, um, uh, cooperatives model uh, uh, beginning in the fashion in the fashion uh, uh, subsector, where uh, we're working with the International Trade Center. We're in the process of um, um, establishing a fashion cooperative that is going to bring together fashion designers from across Africa. And uh, in, this con in this context, we're looking at Africa, including the Caribbean. And thereby, when, when they come together, they can uh, take advantage of joint marketing, joint sourcing, and so on and so forth. In terms of capacity building, we do have a number of programs um, and uh, um, the, we, we have the Caribbean already benefiting from some of the programs. For example, the jewelry making masterclasses, we noticed that some um, uh, jewelers from the Caribbean have participated and taken advantage of, of those masterclasses where you can learn the simple dynamics even of just, of just making a buckle uh, 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 making earrings and so on, thereby opening up enterprise even in that in that aspect. And uh, working with our SME development program, there are a number of incubators that we also uh, uh, incubator program that we also we also uh, support. So our approach to capacity building is not to the extent of maybe provision of vocational training, but we've just taken uh, the view of. Uh, um, master class as well but we just upskill because a lot of creatives are really uh, uh, getting most of their training from the university of youtube but what we try and do is then to structure to structure that working with partners working with partners when whether it's in fashion working with partners in uh, in film uh, working with partners in sports and so on to provide uh, these uh, 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 master classes so we also work um um, and I know in the interest of time, we, we also have an export and investment promotion angle where we have uh, curated events like the Canex Weekend, 
which is coming up in Algeria in October. Or last year, for those of you who came to the Inter-African Trade Fair, you would have seen uh, uh, the Creative Africa Nexus program evident even at uh, um, uh, the ITF. The reason why we've created these platforms is really to create a marketplace for creatives um, um, as part of our Canex program. A lot of the times creative are invited to panels, are invited to events to provide the entertainment, not to discuss the business of the creative. So I've created these platforms as opportunities to discuss the and to look into the business of the creatives so that uh, together, whether it's the governments, private sector and the enterprises, we form a cohesive uh, uh, unit that can really elevate this value chain um, uh, across the global, the global side, the global south. We are um, uh, also uh, invested in uh, uh, provide working on digital solutions. So there's, uh, we, we expect that this year we launch a Canex uh, Africa platform which brings together the producers, the distributors, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, capacity building providers, governments, and so on, payment, payment systems into one uh, 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 online platform. Because the ecosystem for the creatives, on, on, uh, whether it's in the Caribbean and in Africa, is very defragmented. You have very talented fashion designers who have difficulties networking or connecting from a marketing perspective or have issues in terms of um, export and logistics and so on. So we believe that by cre creating this uh, digital platform, we provide that avenue for a more efficient and um, uh, cohesive connection of the creatives, thereby um, um, initiating or being catalytic uh, uh, to the growth and development of creatives uh, on the on the on the continent, we work closely with the FCFTA uh, Secretariat with the AU, because even in the context of the creative and cultural industries, there are a lot of policy issues that uh, uh, need to be addressed. Issues with uh, when it comes to trading services, for example, the movement of labor, whether it's film producers, uh, actors, and so on. So there are all these issues that uh, have a bearing, even the, in terms of intellectual property. Uh, and so on. So um, we are looking at this from a holistic uh, perspective. I've tried to just give uh, that overview, but in case there are very specific uh, issues that you want us to also look at, um, I'm available and ready to answer. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Temwa. Um, I think we will end here in the sense that um, what we will commit to do is um, obviously the Zoom platform has allowed us to know who's registered, we'll post the questions, et cetera. So, um, okay, what we will do is um, summarize those questions, send it over to you and your team in Barbados, and we will um, basically put you in touch or facilitate some sort of question answer between those, those we've not been able to address today. I know Demi has been very patient with us. <laughs> He's actually on vacation, but he could not miss this session. So I will turn over to Demi, Dr. Sinanan, who is the manager for competitiveness and export promotion here at Caribbean Export to deliver the closing remarks um, before we, we log off. Yeah, thank you so much, Natasha. Um, and first of all, I'd like to say thank you to all the attendees that took part here this morning. I think at some point we had over 250 persons actually in the room. I was looking at the number myself. So that to me shows that there's very much interest in exploring trade investment partnerships between the Caribbean region and our brothers and sisters in Africa. Um, Caribbean Export is extremely committed to getting this process, and we have been working very strongly with um, our teams in, in Africa and uh, in the Caribbean region to facilitate this process. I mean, we all spoke about the, we, all, we spoke about the mission that we did, and we spoke about, um, um, you know, the this webinar is just sort of like the first step in sort of exploring opportunities that are upcoming. So with that being said, I'd like to say, uh, Thank you to Oki and his team, Temwa and Zito, and of course, uh, Executive Vice President um, for taking part in the forum this morning. Um, we really appreciate the insight that you all brought. And of course, my good friend, Dave, I mean, practical experiences are always the best way forward 
And I thought you provided some very good practical experience that can really benefit our attendees going forward. Um, I'd also like to say thank you very much to, of course, Natasha for and the team at Caribbean Export for putting this event together and really doing a wonderful job in moderating and ensuring that we had time for questions and answers. And on the Afri Exim Bank side, uh, Matimba Chang uh, Changala and Adelia Lewis, thank you so much for all your hard work in putting this together. So with that being said, I'd like to once again say thank you on behalf of Caribbean Export Developments Agency, Afri Exim Bank, uh, global integrated uh, fintech solutions um, in really making this a successful forum. So thank you all and have a wonderful day. Natasha, over to you. Yes, thank you so much, Davey. Um, and before I close, let me just say thank you everybody for sticking with us um, for an additional hour. And we really would like to urge that you respond to our, our short survey as you log off. Um, a, a short survey will pop up and we really look forward to to your feedback and also to seeing you at the next at the next engagement. As Demi said, um, this is the first of what we believe will be an enduring partnership. So thank you again to all of you and special thanks to the team at Avrex Bank. Have a good afternoon and a good evening. Bye-bye.